So the second set of coordinate systems we want to learn about are cylindrical coordinates. This case, instead of moving with the particle, the coordinates rotate with the particle, but they don't actually move with the particle. All right, so you've got a radial component that always points from the origin through the particle, but away from the origin. And we've got a transverse component, which corresponds to a, a counterclockwise angle. It's perpendicular again, right? Our coordinate systems are always perpendicular. But as the angle would increase counterclockwise, that would be the direction of the unit vector in the transverse. So if we have a position, R, then it, that R, the position of this particle, is purely in the UR direction. So in the normal tangential uh, coordinate systems, we only ever had one component in, of the velocity. Here we only have one component of the position. You're never going to have a transverse part of the position. We, to find the, the velocity, we're going to take the derivative of this. Now remember, UR is no longer fixed in a direction, right? Because as it move, as the particle moves, the UR changes direction. So we have derivative of R times UR plus R times the derivative of UR. The derivative of UR is R times theta dot times U theta. Okay, so our final dr dr uh, equation for velocity, the first term in the UR is just R dot. The second term, which is due to the change in direction, is R theta dot U theta. Do it again for acceleration. You're going to have an, R th an uh, AR, a radial part of the acceleration, times UR, transverse part of the acceleration times U theta. The radial part of AR of the acceleration is R double dot minus R theta dot squared. And the transverse part of the acceleration is R theta dot double dot plus 2 R dot theta dot. So if you look at the variables that are in these equations, we've got r, right? So we've got r, r dot, and r double dot. We've got theta dot, and we've got theta double dot. So if we can find a value for these five things, then we just plug them into the equations to find the a, the acceleration and the velocity. So one special case that's of interest here if, is if, if this is circular motion, r is going to be a constant, right? Because the definition of a circle has a constant r. All right, so if r is a constant, then r dot and r double dot are zeros. So take, take a look then at these expressions and figure out what happens when r dot and r double dot are zeros. And this will help you with some of the questions in the immediate practice. All right, so let's take a look at an example of this. We have a disc, it's spinning, and we have a ball that moves outwards along the disc as it's spinning. So we're given an expression for theta, right? So this tells us how it's spinning. And we're given an expression for r, so this tells us how fast it's moving outwards. And we're supposed to determine the magnitudes of the velocity and the acceleration of the ball when t happens to be 1.5 seconds. So as we said on the previous slide, these five variables, if we can find values for these five, we're set. So we're given r. 0.1 t cubed. And we know that t is equal to 1.5 seconds. So at 1.5 seconds, r is equal to 0.3375. All right. To find r dot, we need to take the derivative of r. So r dot 
is 0 0.3 t squared. All right, and we plug in, these are all at t equal to 1.5 seconds, right, over here. So r dot is equal to 0.675. Okay, r double dot is 0 0.6 t which then gives us our double dot is equal to 0.9. All right, same thing with the thetas. We're given theta, 4t to the 3 halves. We don't care about theta at t equal to 1.5 because theta is not in our, our expressions. Theta dot is equal to 4 times 3 halves t to the 1 half. That one we do care about, plug it in, we get 7, oops, theta dot is equal to 7.35, okay, and then we get theta double dot is equal to 4 times 3 halves times 1 half times t to the negative 1 half which gives us a theta double dot of 2.45. All right, so velocity. Velocity is equal to r dot ur plus r theta dot u theta. r dot ur plus r theta dot u theta, all right? So we have all of these values. So the magnitude of V is equal to the square root of R dot, which is 0.675 squared, plus R, 0.3375, times theta dot, which is 7.35, both of these, so quantity squared, square root. Plug those into the calculator, you get 2.57 meters per second. Acceleration has two parts. We've got the R part of acceleration is equal to R double dot minus r theta dot squared. Plug in your numbers. And so we've got r double dot is 0 0.9 minus r 0.3375 times 7.35 squared. And we've got a n, well, this is equal to negative 17.33. And a theta, rather, is equal to r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot, which you plug in all the various numbers, you're going to get 10.75. So the magnitude of a is equal to the square root of a r squared plus a theta squared. And that's equal to 20.4 meters per second squared. And so that is then our solution to this problem. So velocity, the so magnitude of velocity is 2.57 and the magnitude of the acceleration is 20.4. Notice those magnitudes aren't tied to the coordinates. So had we solved this using one of the other coordinate systems, the math would have been a whole lot more difficult, but we would still get 2.57 and 20.4. So by way of review, let's take a look at these three coordinate systems. We've got the rectangular ones. Those are the ones we're used to. It's a fixed coordinate system. It's sitting somewhere. It's not going to move, and it's not going to change direction. But on the other hand, R, V, and A could all have up to three components each. Okay? The tangent normal is useful when we know the path that the particle is following.
right? So if we have an equation for that path, for example, or we know it's a circle with a certain curvature, something of this sort, then it makes sense to use this coordinate system. This is a moving coordinate system, all right? So it's fixed to the particle and it moves so that one, the ut is always tangential to the path and the un is always perpendicular to the path. This means the velocity is always only going to have one coordinate. The acceleration is going to have two. All right. The polar or cylindrical coordinate system turns with the particle. So it's fixed, but as the particle moves along its path, the coordinate system turns to always point at it. So the r is always in the direction outwards from the origin, and the theta is always in the direction of a counterclockwise angle. Here, the r, or the position coordinate, is always only going to have one coordinate, one component, and the velocity and the acceleration are going to have two each. So this one is typically used when you know angular information. So you know that something is rotating at a certain angular speed, theta dot, or angular acceleration, theta double dot.